Producer dude, here we are again with the Big Water Podcast, but this week it's going to be a little bit different. We kind of have a special edition, if you will. Special edition. I feel like I need like that that special music to come on, and, and we're taping this <laughs> almost live. So, uh, you know, by the time people see this, it'll only be about an hour, hour or two old. Yeah, it's, um, you know, typically the people that don't maybe listen to our podcast or haven't in the past, we talk about people, their stories, things in the industry, you know, more of the fishing specific techniques even at times um but a lot of it you know telling people stories and having some pretty popular people like al Linder, gary roach larry dahlberg and such but we've got two guys this week um that have been on the podcast before and uh, we're going to be talking about the recent events in the lake Erie walleye trail which is kind of the elephant in the room so without further ado let's bring in our two guests here there they are. We've got Craig Lewis from the Walleye Slam, and we've got Jason Fisher from the Fall Brawl in the Lake Erie Walleye Trail. Thanks for coming aboard, boys. Thanks for having Thanks us. For having us. So definitely, I can just kind of see it in your faces a little bit, to be honest with you, you know, because I'm kind of, ah, and you guys, it's it's a little more docile. I know it gets long weekend in that, but um, some of the events that have gone on here in the last, I guess, 48 hours have probably uh, worn you guys out a little bit, haven't they? I'm busted. I can tell you that much. Yeah. Good night, and, sleep. Welcome. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize that uh, I would say you guys are buddies. Is that fair to say? Like a lot of people think there's this Hatfield and McCoy thing between the walleye slam and the fall brawl. And, you know, things have changed and there's been moving around and um, it definitely doesn't appear that way to me. And I, I don't think that that's how it is, is it? No. Uh, long after all this stuff is gone, Jason and I will be friends. So we were we were friends before it started. I can well, you know, yeah, before it started, I guess. So I guess I'll intro it a little bit because we'll assume that maybe somebody doesn't know, even though the New York Times and you know TMZ and everybody else has picked up this deal. Just a couple of days ago, there was a basically cheating scandal, if you will, or people were caught cheating in the Lake Erie Walleye Trail. But I think the thing that makes it juicy, obviously, there was a video, you know, that has been going around from people there. But I think the thing that's kind of juicy is, is there was a lot of people that were suspecting that something had been going on, you know, and even some of your guys, which, are, you know, I'm not going to name names on any of these things. But, you know, there's some guys that fish on your trail that I kind of said, hey, guys, like you can't you can't say these things. You know, you can't get too far. And I don't want to put words in your mouth. But um, even though there was some strong maybe signals out there of that things were were not quite awry. And Jason, why don't you just break it out and throw it down and, and tell us, you know, what happened here on, I guess it would have been Friday, right? Yeah. So Friday, um, very long story short, if you, if you, you know, we can go back and if you, I don't know if you want to basically, uh, referee this, but long story short, we caught, we caught two anglers that had lead weights, uh, and, and, uh, and fish flays inside their fish. Um, that's the end story. Uh, so going back, you know, to the beginning of the story, we, we had our Lake Erie Walleye Trail Championship. Uh, it was a beautiful little break in the weather before we got all these winds this weekend. Uh, and we were able to, you know, send off Friday morning out of East 72nd Gordon Park there in Cleveland uh, to try to wrap up our season. Um, the weigh-ins, you know, were, were tough. A lot of these guys were struggling. Um, the, the lake had had some serious north wind conditions and you know, temperatures were dropping on in the water and, and some guys say the lake flipped and it was just it was just tough fishing and uh, weigh ins were showing that. And and then kind of all heck broke loose there at the end. Uh, you know, I don't know how you want, if you want me to go into, you know, all details or. How yeah, you for sure. I mean, you know, the, like I said, I think the biggest thing is this is not to throw shade on anybody or anything. Hopefully we can learn from this. But obviously there's a lot of people like I've had people from. Canada, Florida, the East Coast, people that don't walleye fish, you know, contact me nonstop. So I can't even imagine yourself. So, I mean, yeah, getting from the horse's mouth for the people can hear firsthand what happened on your end. And then we'll discuss a little bit of things moving forward because I've seen comments even on some of my stuff, you know, because I haven't touched this yet. I haven't put a thing out there. It, I'm not going to say it doesn't involve me because I make my living in the fishing industry just like you guys do. But the reality is, is it wasn't my place. I wanted to get it right from the horse's mouth. And but some of the comments are like, oh, the Lake Erie Walleye Trail is over with, or these derbies are this and that. It, it's, to me, it's the opposite. But uh, cheating has been going on for forever. I mean, early in my career, and we'll get into that later, I've seen this stuff. It's been going on. It's still going on. 
Um, this is just one big black eye. And I think that the media, you know, compared to when I was doing things when we didn't have social media like this, right, it's a different deal. So getting picked up by the New York Times is not something that would have happened back in early in my career or in some of the older guys doing this. Yeah. So, you know, first, first of all, the, the feedback that I've received from our guys, um, fishermen, fishermen that fish the Lake Erie Walleye Trail and fishermen that don't, is they were happy to see uh, some guys that were being dishonest in the tournament scene get caught. Um, so we'll back up. Everybody's always asking, how did this come about? Why, why did, you know, how did you catch these guys? And a long story short is I study the weights of what these teams need in order to win. And, and we have a team of the year race uh, coming to a head on Friday in the championship. So I, I knew where the guys stood uh, on the leaderboard and how many places that they would have to win or lose by um, to take that title. So I held teams off that were in the race um, and particularly Ryan buddy, Jason Koff uh, were in third place. Um, Steve Hendricks, Brian Almer were in second. And then the, the two guys in question here were leading the race. So I held those guys off to the end and weighed in Steve Hendricks, Brian Almer. Those guys end up posting up a score good enough for fifth place in the tournament. Um, they were sitting right about 22 pounds. And with that, I knew um, that the next guys needed to be 10th place or better um, because they had such a lead. Uh, they had about a 14 point lead that they needed. 10th place or better to win. So I'm looking at the weight and they needed about 16 pounds to break um, 11th place, 16 and some change. So when I saw them sitting in the bump tank and pulling their fish and putting them into the basket, I said, okay, uh, you know, it's about a four pound fish. That's probably another four pound fish, uh, probably another four pound fish, nothing big, nothing small. I just, it, those, those are average Lake Erie walleye uh, fish right now, just the five pound cookie cutters. Just a great, solid, healthy fish. And uh, when they come up to the scale, they, they threw the first one on for big fish, and we weighed it in, and it was seven seven nine zero, I believe, 790. And I'm just like, how? You know, this is a, you know, I see a lot of fish come across the scale, and it's my job to create some of this drama, some of this hype. And if, if somebody comes up to the scale with a 10-pounder, and I'm like, oh, yep. Yeah, here comes Ross Robertson with a, with a walleye and he puts it up there. And next thing you know, you're winning big fish. And, and I didn't even say a word about it. That's lame. And if like, contrary to that, if you have some six pound walleye, and he needs 9.7 to beat big fish. And it's a six pounder. I look dumb too. So I'm fairly accurate. I'm within, you know, I'm within a pound or something every time. So when I, when I, when I see this, I'm just like, I don't, this is just no way. No way. So they put the, 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 the next four fish to make their five fish basket on the scale. And I'm thinking mid, mid 20, you know, 20 pound bag, just simply because the, the four pound average, you got five fish, that's 20. And you got, you know, if there's 4.2, 4.3, whatever, it's going to bring you over 20 pounds. So I'm expecting that. And the scale jumps to like 33, nine, and I, almost a 34 pound bag. And, and that, that to me, that's, that's better than a six and three quarter average. I mean, you're, you're almost looking at a seven pound average to get 35 pounds. And I'm just like, there's just no way there's zero chance that those fish weighed that. I, I mean, I look at these fish all season long, not only when I'm fishing, uh, you know, I mean, hell when I'm fishing with my buddies, I caught an eight pounder, but, but, that, but I hold that sucker way out here, you know, and I'm leaning way back when I, those, the scale doesn't lie. So when I'm up there and I see a four pound fish, five pound fish, that's, that's usually what they weigh. And these guys are mid twenties all day long on these tournaments. So I said, you know, Hey, step off to the side. I want to get some photos of these fish and I'd like you to hang out a minute. Well, you know, it deflated me. It was like, I, it was like, I let a balloon go and it just went, all, you know, I just, the wind was out of my sails and, and I'm, I just don't know what to do. So I hear the crowd kind of grumbling. They're just, you know, no way those fish, you know, and I believe somebody when he even weighed big fish was like, yeah, right. And, and I, I just knew I had to do something. So I, I said, you know, I want to see those fish. So I inspected the fish. I pulled the first one out. I just looked simply, was it alive? 
and it wasn't alive. Um, so I put so it this in. Is, let me interrupt you for a second. This is when you took it because I saw the video and he yeah. was kind of just hanging around there with a bag. They both took pictures holding the fish up. Mm -hmm. Then the one guy disappeared. The other guy's holding the bag. And that's when you mm -hmm. said like, hey, I need to see your fish. Because I was in the video, it's kind of hard yeah. to tell because there was a couple of guys yelling at him, like cut him open and things well, like that. Well, yeah. No, so I think, so prior to, you know, the guy starting to get really animated, I, I told him, I said, I want to I want to take a look at those fish. And, you know, there was some, communication back and forth. Like, are you serious? You know, this has got to stop. And I'm like, I, yeah, I am serious. I want to take a look at them. So I took a look at the fish. Um, the first one in the basket, you know, I, I, and if, if people were yelling at that time, I didn't, I didn't hear them. I was, I was more focused on what I was doing. Um, and I pulled the second fish out and I laid it on the ground and I, and I squeezed the fish. I just, I wanted to feel if it was mushy because both of these fish were dead. And when you have a walleye, um, there's a firmness about them. I'm sure you could, I'm sure you could, you know, tell people more about that, Craig. I know you could. It's it's just, you know, a live fish. They're just they're firm. Um, and I, I I just wanted to feel the fish, so I squeezed the fish. I squeezed the belly, and I immediately felt things in the belly of this fish, hard objects. P Producer, um, dude, could you show a picture up there while we're doing this? Okay, go on, Jason. We're just going to show this while you're talking about yeah, it. Yeah, so, so I felt these objects, and I stopped right there, and I and I told somebody, my way guy, I said, hey, go get me a knife. And he, he got me a knife, and I handed him my phone, and I said, videotape this, because if there was something in those fish, I wanted, I wanted to show that I was going to remove something from those fish. And as I cut that fish open, I immediately found uh, one of the lead weights, and I just, oh my gosh, it was. Just, I see. I'm looking at your picture here, and you were looking like you're gonna come off at somebody. And uh... yeah, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I said, see, the only, well, only thing I messed up on is I said, get the f out of here. You know, if I would have just said you're out of here, I think I would be getting some MLB umpire endorsements, but. You know, I guess, you know, I think you're all right. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I got a little animated and, uh, just basically raw emotion came out at that time. And I, I said, get the hell out of here. And actually I said, get the F out of here. And, and then at that, at that moment that it, it, it turned into from a fishing tournament to, to a mob scene. I mean, these anglers, these guys, that pour their heart and souls and money to this were just pissed. And this is, and this, this is like really the only thing that I want to get across. This is not about money. Most of these guys have money. I mean, hell, all of them pull into the parking lot with a $200,000 boat and truck combo. You know, they take time away from their wives. They take time away from their kids. They take vacation from their jobs. This is a competitive thing. Like just, just like a manly, raw i want to be the baddest dog out there and and at this point in time those guys took all of that away from from the other anglers and and these guys were pissed and it showed i mean and and i think maybe a minute or two went by and i'm like listen i need you to leave and and guys nobody touch them because I thought, I mean, I thought you, they were, you saved them a beat down. I can tell you that. Cause those guys were crazy animated. And honestly, I, I can't believe you handled it as calm as you did. I don't know that uh, I would have been that calm producer. dude would probably tell you I wouldn't be. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, man. I, I, I hope, I hope that I handled it. Okay. Um, it, 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 it's a, it was a sickening feeling and I'm number one. I'm glad that they did not get hurt or beat up by the mob of people. Um, you know, and that's just, cause that also shows a side of tournament angling. Cause it, had that happened, we would have looked completely stupid tournament anglers, um, you know, fishermen, you know, the whole world would be looking at us right now. Like what is wrong with you people? You know? So that that's important that that didn't happen. So after, you know, you started pulling the weights out, obviously you knew this was game over and you were documenting it. I mean, 
things translating in the parking lot. Obviously, there's some videos you guys have probably seen by now. And basically, the police officers were just trying to keep them safe. And then you're probably just trying to figure this out, right? Because it's easy to sit here a day or two later or people on their couches and be like, oh, this is what I would have done or I should have done this. or, And it's, it's like true. in the heat of the moment, like, you know, I mean. It was kind of, it was actually kind of neat because um, a local law enforcement officer was, he was fishing the event. He was there and he came up to me um, and he's like, hey, and he kind of whispered in my ear. He goes, you know, you need to treat this um as a crime that it potentially is and i and i said you know what you're right i said will you take over this scene because i wasn't thinking properly i said can you can you handle this and he did um craig you know craig it's actually one of your guys he's an eerie marine he's an eerie marine guy um i just i don't know if he'd want his name out there so i didn't i didn't I, i'm not going to say his name but he handled the incident professionally he spoke with law enforcement that was there uh whether he called him or other anglers called him um he handled it the way it should have been handled and then uh when i was able to clear my head i i, I talked to those guys uh and gave them the information that i had and i actually had to follow up with them today they they needed statements from me and etc and i and it, everything's been turned over to them um it's it's their case the division of wildlife and in the metro park police so you don't have any indication because the question I keep getting privately is, hey, are these guys going to be charged with fraud? Because, you know, there was just in this event alone, there was at least $10,000 for, I think it's only over five that you have to have be for fraud, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then there's also like a prizes and contests fraud as well. There's all, there's all kinds of things. Those fish cubed up. I mean, did you you know, those, those actually fillets being cut up, like that's while maybe minor in the big scale of things, isn't that a whole nother thing within itself? Yeah. I don't, I don't know all the division of wildlife rules and regulations, um, as far as what, what could be, uh, punishable. Um, I will say that they clearly are interested in all of the information, all of the photos, all of the results, all, everything, how much they could have won, how much, you know, the tournament, you know, they, they want it all. And, you know, obviously these guys do their best uh, to, to investigate and make a complete case, if you will. And that's, that's what they're going to do. And, and I won't prevent them from doing any of that, whatever information they need as what I'll, what I'll give them. Craig, I mean, does this, I mean, you, you were, you're not involved in this, but obviously you're involved in this, right? I mean, an indirect way because of prior to this, again, I know we don't want to speak in theoretical stuff, but there's been a lot of alleged things because guys kind of, I don't want to say came out of nowhere, but all of a sudden people are doing really, really, really well that, you know, haven't done that in the past. And historically no one has done that well. And there was shadows through those processes. Right. And in the, the fall derby, was it last year where, they failed a Jason was it last year or the year before where they failed a fall brawl lie detector test one of the parties yeah it was last last year yeah. so but then where the kind of I don't want to say drama but where the things go on is Craig then they passed yours correct right correct and so obviously that's where things were like I mean because can you imagine if this is your neighbor or your friend even rather you're on either side of this is okay how do you get basically in the same situation because people that are maybe outside of the Ohio area or don't follow this Lake Erie walleye trail or things closely is the, both of these derbies that these guys run are a one fish, big fish derby winner take all four five, six weeks or whatever that that period is. And you can weigh in a fish with Craig and then walleye slam, or you can weigh in a fish with a fall brawl, meaning the exact same fish. There's no minor theirs or what have you. And, and while that fish could perhaps lose an ounce or two in travel between the different weigh in stations that they have, um, Pretty much it's the same rules. You guys, within reason, it's the same things. You don't want people doing blatant cheating things. Uh, you know, go back and take, you know, talk on our podcast that we had with Jason just roughly a week ago where we kind of talk about some of these things. But, you know, he's and I've heard Craig say this, I think, on our podcast as well last year where you're like, I'm not out to get technicalities on people, but we just want to know that you're not putting egg sinkers in your fish. So totally. I guess that's that's the big question that people have. And I know you don't have an answer, but we got to talk about it. It's the elephant in the room of 
you know, and I'm sure just for moving forward, if nothing else, like this is water under the bridge, but it's still a hot topic, right? And people want to know moving forward, like how does a guy pass one lie detector test for the same condition, same fish, and then not pass another? Well, I mean, I don't, I can't answer that. And I, I don't believe Jason can either. Um, I know he uses reputable guys. We use reputable guys. Um, because people have paid money to enter these events, you can't just change rules in the middle and simply put, they passed our test. I'm required to pay them. I cannot not pay somebody because I don't like them. I don't like their wife. I don't like their dog. Um, they, you know, uh, I don't like the way they cut their grass. It's we have rules in place and we have to follow them. Things like this happen. And I'm sure, you know, I mean, I want to speak for Jason, but we'll respond and we'll do our best to try to keep these as fair as we possibly can. Um, I wish I had a rock solid answer for everybody. It, you know, oh, well, this is how it happens. And this is the next thing we're going to run into. And I, I don't, it, it, it's true, like, and I'm sure Jason will say the same thing. In our hearts, we want to believe that everybody's fishing these for the right reason. Um, they want to come to our communities, fish for our fish because, you know, they're beautiful and the, the fishing's wonderful. And there's all these positive things, and it's a very small portion of people that, you know, will ruin it for you. And, um, you know, I, I, I just don't have the words to, to say why it happens or how it happens. It just, it just happens. Um, Jason and I have, uh, talked to each other a lot over the last year, not just about personal matters, but about this stuff. And I know in his heart, like in my heart, I wish none of these things happened. It brought no joy to see him have to go through what he's been through and then to know the way he's been feeling the last couple days. I mean, no offense, Jason, but look at you, you're beat down, you're tired. You, you made the time to do this because it's the right thing to do. And, uh, wish I had a solid answer for you on that, Ross. I just don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think a lot of this we have solid answers, but more just getting it out there and, and letting as many facts be known. And again, I'm not trying to throw shade in different areas, but I think that, you know, there's so many times in life, I mean, forget fishing, that when you don't discuss things or put it out there and it keeps getting hidden behind, hidden behind, then all of a sudden these things just compound and are worse. And I mean, if Jason, I mean, I know this isn't a definitive thing, but you had to have known in your gut that there was something going on. Um, like you said, when you see everybody weighing a 24 inch fish or whatever that so many of these guys have, but yet they're weighing in, in previous tournaments as well, that uh, because I remember seeing, and, and again, maybe I'm reading between the lines, you tell me, but that they had a camera guy or several people had camera peoples, but yet we've never done that before in the Lake Erie Walleye Trail, right? Or at least not recently that was, so was that a means of checking balances? So yes and no. So um, I want to answer two questions just because I want to touch on what Craig said. So, so you asked about, you know, how do we get away from the polygraphs and, and the tests and how do you get two different answers? The first, the first and very simple answer is number one, it's a tool and it's administered by a human being. Okay. And that human being was different when it was taken the first time and, the, and, and then the second time. So Two human beings are going to conduct the, the test differently. They're going to ask different questions and they're going to get slightly different results. Um, also, you know, it was just simply taken on a different day. So, you know, all there, there's many factors, but I just wanted to throw out there that at the end of the day, these instruments and these tools that we use, it's the only thing we can do to prevent any type of dishonesty is still administered by a person who's subject to making mistakes or simply not asking something to get the right result that you want you just never know um what happened uh but but, but so there's so you, so you have the human error element um in some of these tests also um and then um no oh, so what was it? what was the second part of the question the observer about, okay about so these, the observers these, that were put so, in or having any idea maybe something was taking place yeah so yeah so so I, I these guys throughout the course of the the year they they win tournaments and they've taken all these tests. I personally this year um, have sent them to a voice stress test. I sent them to an actual polygraph test, um, and then as they continue to win, 
uh, anglers get continuously agitated. So how do I negate this? And I, I have two ways. I could just simply say, can I put an observer on your boat and piss people off? Because I don't want somebody to think that I'm targeting them because I'm not. So I wanted to document our team of the year race. And I put uh, camera guys on three different boats um, and Gene uh, yeah, Geneva. And the first, second, and and the guy had won uh, Big Fish Friday with, a, I believe, a 12-pounder. So I put camera guys on those boats expecting that they were going to have good days. And when I spoke with these guys midday, it was to change the camera guy from one boat to another, and they wouldn't let me do it. Um, you know, they either they were having a really good day, which could be possible, or they really wanted to stick it to me and conduct whatever type of dishonesty they did right underneath my nose. And they did end up winning the tournament. I completely, you know, for me, I was like the happiest guy on the face of this planet because everybody doubts these tests. What's up with these tests? You know, blah, blah, blah. They're not good enough, you know. And finally they won and I had my guy on the boat videoing the whole thing. I mean, I received photos at like 10 a.m. holding up a couple nice fish. Now, photos can be deceiving, um, but but still, I had photos of, of holding up a nice fish. So the intention wasn't to target anybody because I had three different boats being filmed. Um, it was to promote the Lake Erie Walleye Trail and the Team of the Year race, which, which all of our sponsors donate into, um, you know, and these anglers that work their ass off. I wanted to show what we were shooting for here. And um, it just so happened that, that they had a camera guy on their boat and they had a good day. So, you know, I don't know how it worked out, but they won the tournament and, and I was pleased. I, I was, thank, thank God for, I could put it to rest. You know, at least I thought, you know, I was like, I, I, I'm just, I'm comfortable with this. I could put it to rest. And then uh, that brings us right into this tournament. Quite frankly, my camera guy, um, he's like, absolutely. Am I not going out in chances of rain? And the waves were, were pretty sloppy and he just, he called, he pulled the plug on it and Saturday was a blow day. So there was no shot of going out Saturday. Um, so I didn't get to complete my team of the year race. I'm almost glad that I didn't, I, I don't even want to know if I had professional film of this whole thing. What would, I, I don't even, I don't even want to know, but it, it wasn't an observer, sure, but it was to document all of these anglers. And they just so happened to be at the top of the leaderboard, so they got a camera. And for the record, they would not let me remove the camera to move it to a different boat. So how many tests have they passed between the walleye slam, fall brawl, slash leaky walleye trail, that whole spring derby, MWC? They've not taken list, one. List. They've not taken one for the MWC. Oh, okay. I thought they did a year ago. No. They took – so they've taken one for me uh, last year. They've taken a, a, a VSA for me this year, a polygraph for me this year. Um, they did the spring derby last year. They did the walleye slam and the fall brawl uh, last year. And then they took one for the um, – Ohio Walleye Federation, OWF, uh, this year uh, due to a protest. So I count seven, um, and I don't know. Most of them would be one partner or the other and not both partners. Um, but I'm, I'm sure, I think in the fall brawl they did both partners, and I think in yours, Craig, I can't speak for you, but I, they may have done both partners. I don't we know. Did both. We did both partners. So um, I count seven. There might be more that I don't know about. Um, but half, half of those daggone ones are mine and just per rules we give them. Um, it's not like anybody's targeting them. It's per the rules. If you went and they said it to me, I talked to these guys, they're my buddies, you know, oh, I'm sick of taking these tests. I said, well, then take second place then once in a while, you know? So what, what is the policy? I mean, I, obviously in the derbies, the anybody that gets a cash prize or a boat, they're taking a lie detector test? Yeah. Yep. And then anybody in the Lake Erie Walleye Trail, is it like a random, but then also the winner has to take one? Is that correct? 
Yeah. So in my time with the LEWT, it went it went from strictly protest, meaning Craig says Jason didn't catch his fish legally or the fish were you know somehow altered. He would protest me. They would conduct a test. Um, then it went from me. I imposed a random selection, meaning at the beginning of the day, I would say, hey, third place. Most of the time I did it at the captain's meeting. I would say, hey, third place is getting a test today because you never knew where you were going to finish. Um, even if you did, let's just say you, you came in and you had 40 pounds of fish sitting in your freezer and you wanted to bring them to the scales. I mean, I know my tournament partner in Huron last year put up 40 pounds and he was barely in the top 10. So you just don't know how teams are going to do each day. So I thought that was a good idea to simply deter um, people from from being dishonest. Now, uh, this, you know, this year, because basically guys were like, well, you know, the winners should get them. And I said, OK, I listened to the guys. So I said, all winners will get them. So this year, every winner's been getting a test. And, um, you know, they've been, they've been taking them per the rules and it's, and, and, and nobody in my events have been, um, have taken any due to a protest, which is an option for my events as well. You could fill it out anonymously and you actually pay for the polygraph. And if they pass the test, then your money is forfeited. If they are found to be dishonest, then you receive your money back. I think one of the things that I like to kind of interject is, like I said, I've seen some, of course, on the internet, right? You're going to see some stupid comments. Is people that are given these organizations, all three, the, the two derbies and then the Lake Erie Walleye Trail, kind of shit about this. It's like, well, what would you do? You know, I mean, turn. I don't think people understand. Again, I've been interviewed by several places for this. And these people, they don't understand. They're not fishermen. And they're, they're thinking that this is the only time that cheating happened, you know, in a fishing tournament, for example. Like, that's kind of their perspective. And I can tell you that, 20 some years ago that I saw it going on. I mean, in many ways, shapes and forms, uh, I can even remember Al Linder saying um, he was very vocal about saying that rules and tournaments need to drastically change because they were written and haven't changed since the technology has. And like one that I can remember early on and actually it was, it was not that long ago relative, but it was text messaging. Guys were getting burner phones and they were text messaging, you know, during some major uh, like pro-am tournaments. And I mean, guys have been putting frozen ice in fish and I don't want to give anybody any ideas, but I mean, there's a lot of ways that people are cheating. And this is not just like yesterday or two days ago that this is the first time someone was cheating. So all those comments and things like that, it, it's, it's ludicrous. I mean, I, I don't think you can argue that, can you? No. So we're, because of, of, of these things, I mean, and maybe you don't even want to talk about it quite yet, or you're trying to figure it out, but I mean, the questions that people obviously want to know is, and maybe helps give them a little peace of mind is, you know, for fishing the fall brawl or fishing the Lake here while I trail or the walleye slam moving forward. I mean, there's going to have to be rule changes, don't you think? So, I mean, go ahead, Craig. You are, what I can tell you is this, this happened Friday afternoon it's sunday morning um everybody involved in these events jason and i touch base on it briefly i know me and my partners have talked about it um we are probably going to implement some changes um and we had time to find anything solid or, or price out uh, equipment or to do any of that yet no um but, I, but I, I'll be the one in the room to say it, I guess. There's no possible way for me to guarantee that no one will ever cheat again. It, it's just not possible. The ways that guys have came up with cheating over the years, and again, I don't want to make this a broadcast to teach people how to cheat. Um, it's been done in inch tournaments. It's been done uh, with some relatively new ideas. Uh you know, again, I, I don't want to promote those ideas in any way, shape, or form. All I can guarantee you, and, I, and I'll speak for Jason for a minute, is it, it, we're going to try our best. It, we're, we're not in this because we don't love this. We're not in this because we, we, we like the spirit of the competition. We love seeing our friends win these things. We love seeing kids win these things. 
we do these for a multitude of reasons. These, these events have raised a ton of money for charity. They've done so much in our communities. They brought people from other states here for the first time. There's so many positives. Uh, and I hate that, you know, that we have to have this conversation about the negative, but we'll, we'll do our best. This is all I can really say at this point. Well, I mean, some of the things like I, I and I totally get what you're saying about not giving people uh, examples on how to do it. But like there's a guy from California that built a compartment in his bass boat. I mean, this guy's pretty legendary now. And the crazy thing is, is he was also a really good fisherman. And I'm sure people can kind of figure out who this was. But, uh, you know, some of it was snagging bass. But he had a compartment like above his bilges in the rear of the bass boat where he could basically access that. So he was taking fish from there, putting them into his live well with a co-angler in the boat. And, you know, that's why even having the camera guy, I mean, that doesn't mean you couldn't slip something in there. To be honest, I don't, I'm not really affected by this day to day like you guys are. You know, I don't think about this. I'm not having to worry about it. But when I heard, I, or I saw the pictures and everything like everybody else, I was super shocked that it was lead sinkers in the belly. Like I figured it would be something, especially with such a, Again, my word's going to be shade thrown to the tour, you know what I mean? And and passing these lie detector tests, like that there had to be something much more involved and complicated and not lead in the goddamn belly. Old school. <laughs> Old school. But, I, yeah. but again, is, is this just ego and money? Because, I mean, the two things you got going on, again, back in the day, right? Everything was cost less. Gas wasn't four bucks a gallon and, and things were easier, but there was a lot less money on the line. I mean, look at the fall brawl as the prices have grown or prices are growing or the walleye slam because of, you know, there's more money. I've got people that I personally know that are signing up because, you know, for 20 grand or whatever, eh, but now all of a sudden we've got a boat or 50 grand or whatever those numbers are that, you know, that's probably a reason that, you know, the when rules the prize, are different things. When the prize pot when the prize pot paid out five and it was 10 grand, we had the same number of cheaters we have today. Well, and, and, and that's a fit. It it's the ego. You know, and, and again, you can tell me the exact numbers, but like when I've had people, because the, some of the things that I'm privately uh, entertaining, I guess you could say with some of these phone calls with industry people and they're like, oh my God. I'm like the one year in the fall brawl, wasn't there like three out of five people that didn't pass a lie detector test? It was more than one. For sure. I, yeah. I don't. I know that there was two last year. I don't. I don't remember. I mean, I'm going back a several years. It was even before this kind of shenanigans started. There was, there, you know, again, people testing. They're like, it's like two year olds almost. Like they're testing and testing and seeing like how much pushback there's going to be. I'm assuming because of obviously the money involved. Well, a lot of people don't think. Number one, they don't think they're going to get caught, and 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 they just they test the waters. I mean, a lot you Google polygraphs and there's, you know, oh, you can put a thumbtack in my big toe or whatever. I mean, it's just stupid. And people think that they can test those waters. And like Craig said, this is not the money thing is secondary, I think, because it's it's got to be an ego. Look at me. And, and that's what gets a lot of people in trouble, not just fishing, just in, in all walks of life. Um, you know, you just and then in this one. They just went to the cookie jar too many times. And to me, I just, I felt obligated to do something. And, and, and it, for, if, if it was those walleye fillets in there, I don't know if I would have felt that, <laughs> but it was just like so obvious that I just knew immediately, not even like one second, it didn't take me to know that there was something in there. I mean, the walleyes are not eating rocks. Well, and, and, and I'm not accusing you guys when I say this, but looking back, I mean, do you think that there were some signs that you might have wished you'd, I mean, hindsight being 2020, that you'd acted on? Because like the one thing, again, that as I've heard the stories and, you know, I know a lot of people that, that fish your, your tournament series and they're like, hey, in the one open, nothing to do with you guys, but there was an open tournament that they won and they, they allegedly had dead fish that were weighed in that people said, hey, these fish are dead. It's a springtime. Like these are hard. And they donated those. Then the next day they had fish that looked alive, but they were one of the only teams out of, you know, whatever, 99% of the, of the field, everybody but them donated their fish to the soup kitchen, which a lot of people, if you're not from here, um, there, we have kill tournaments in Ohio. The DNR will not give a live release tournament. And so these fish are taken and donated to soup kitchens 
homeless shelters, whatever it may be for somebody that needs it a little more than we do. And somebody takes these and cleans them and then moves them on. And I would say 90 some percent of the fish, the guys generally donate them. But when you see like these guys are the only ones not donating them and time after time, I mean, I, I know you can't act on anything because you can only do what you can do. But at the same point, it seems like there was, there was a lot of signs pointing to this. Yeah. So I, I'll, I definitely want to touch on that one, Craig, you can too, but you, you have to work within the rules of your event. And I, I try my best to live by this. You have to treat people, you know, with, with equality and, and give them the credit they deserve. These guys have passed these tests, right? If they don't want to donate their fish, they don't donate their fish. Not all of our anglers do. And, you know, that's, that's what I had on my plate. And, and to come up to, to, to the stage with a dead fish on Lake Erie, it's, it's fairly common, you know, like you said, the springtime, sure. You know, you can keep them alive right now in the summertime, they're coming out of 70 foot of water and they're running, these guys are running 45 miles. You know, a lot of times the fish do look dead. So you act within your rules. Um, I, we gave them these tests and they were passing them and that's all I could do. I'm not going to single somebody out just because I want to. Um, and say, Hey, look, man, why didn't you donate your fish? Let me take a look at those. Because if I'm wrong, then that also, there goes my circuit as well. You know, you don't want the anglers thinking that you're targeting them. Um, but at the same time, you don't want the anglers thinking that you're just letting stuff slide. So it's a very slippery slope and you have to tread lightly. And, and, you know, if I did something, I wanted it to be almost certain. And I knew these fish did not weigh 33 pounds or 34 almost. I knew it. I knew it in my my heart and my my bones and and we got to the bottom of it. And does that throw some hindsight on all the previous ones? Maybe. Okay? Maybe. But I I definitely knew it this time and my gut was right. I mean, there's been a lot of, I guess you could say smoke with this, right? Because people feeling the same thing. I've had multiple guys and, and I'm always cautious because, and I'm going to lump myself on this. You know, I'm a, I'm a fishing guy. That's how I make my living. But fishermen like to whine and, and complain. I mean, whether you're cheating or it's, I want the tournament over here. You should have let us out. You shouldn't have canceled the tournament. You know, why did we go to this port? We should have been here. Th that's just the reality in it. But um, I guess with, as much smoke as there was, you guys had to have had a, a, a lot more of a higher alert on these things. I mean, there just, there had to be, I mean, I realize you can only do what you can do on that, but this one seemed like there was a lot of smoke. Well, when, when you, when you put yourself in that position, meaning that those anglers, you know, I, go, go back in history, you know, I, take this year, and last year, I looked at this year, I think there might have been only one event that they didn't cash a check in. Um, and then bring that back to last year, I think they won two or three of my last my last two or three events. I mean, and then couple that up, you're talking out of 10, 10 events, maybe 11, you know, they've, they've won six or seven of them. It's just not, not, not is it not probable, but it's not possible. You know, Craig knows the best anglers on the lake. Ross, you're one of them. You just have shitty days one sometimes, you know. I mean, it's just flat out you do. And and my wife said to me one time, she's like, what are you guys bitching about these guys for? She goes, has anybody ever done this good? And I'm like, yeah, actually they have. You know, guys have cashed consistent checks and there's consistent anglers. So well, consistent and winning is a whole different game. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and because, and I, because again, when, when the fish are like, sorry to interrupt you, but when the fish are so tight here and we have, we don't have as many big, big fish as we used to. So you need that one or two extra bites and most guys aren't getting them and everybody's fishing. Like those weights are tighter, right? I mean, right. they just are. So, so like then you default to the test, right? So they won by three or four pounds and, and, and you're like, man, you know, but I, ha I go to that test because that's all I have and they pass it. So I say I have to give them the benefit of the doubt, you know, 
Does it smell fishy? No pun intended. Maybe, but you have to, you have to give them the benefit of the doubt, and that's what I tried to do. So, you know, and I, I know again, like anything else, looking backward, way easier than looking forward. I mean, um. I think Jason did a great job with what he had to work with. And in the end, the right thing happened. And and he deserves credit for that. Yeah, I don't think anybody with two brain cells or knows anything about this is going to point fingers at either one of you guys. But obviously, it's like the elephant in the room and trying to figure moving forward. Because like I have a client who does lie detector tests. He has done for some of your organizations in the past. And, you know, I think that maybe is there because there's different levels, right? Like the guy that I know, you know, he's like, he says, I've done stuff for the FBI, the DEA and and murder cases, not that they're admissible in court, but there's different levels of them and maybe changing things up. Like I said, I don't expect you guys to have some like master plan. We're all still kind of getting over the shock of even this happening. Right. Um, I don't think anybody was surprised that happened, but you're always still surprised that happened. I think, I I think we're going to implement waterboarding. And we're going to get some of the, uh, <laughs> we're really going to put people through the test. I like this. Uh, I got some I like smiles this. out of you guys. Well, you're the one that's been, you, he, he, you look like you've been run over. Like, this is easy for me to sit back here and say, hey, why didn't you do this? Or, hey, you know, it's this is an easy one to host. You guys are I, in the hot seat. So I'll just let you in on something, Ross. And, and I talked with Craig and like, people think that we're full of shit. I love this stuff. And Craig loves this stuff. And this breaks my heart. And these dudes are my friends. And and this national hype that they're getting worldwide, not even national, it breaks my heart. And I hope that they're okay. You know, I hope that all my anglers are going to at some point be able to move on from this. But, dude, this is not this is not tournament angling. And Craig touched on it. You know, we do so many good things for the community and for the people just at our event on Friday, we were raising money for a young boy with cancer. I mean, that nobody knew until, you know, a month ago. It's just these guys come together and throw thousands of their hard-earned dollars at charities and, and causes, you know, and this, this it tarnishes that, but we'll get it back. I mean, it, not so many times, in. Jason and I. So many times Jason and I fight to get a sponsorship or a prize. And, you know, a lot of people don't understand everything we do. And and we're so excited to present that prize or to somebody on stage and we hand it to them and they look at us and they hand it back. And, and you know, these are good guys. These are our friends. I've known a lot of these guys since before they had walleye boat. It's, you know, and then on the other light, we have friends that they stole from that we care about as well. And we think about them. This is a, you know, it's, it's, you, you got a big family and the, the one bad kid shoplifts and, you know, ends up getting suspended from school. And, you know, it, it's not. Was fun. that you, Craig? Were, Craig, were you that kid? <laughs> um, it was, it wasn't brother. me or Jason. It, it wasn't was me or Jason. Brother. I promise you that my brother. <laughs> but 90, 90, Nine percent of what we do is really awesome, and unfortunately, things like this bring it to light. And hopefully, with all the promotion this gets, it, it it's some roundabout way it lets people know that we got the best walleye fishing in the world. We have multiple multiple events that you can come here and enjoy, and it is a great place. And our anglers are some of the best anglers in the world, not just because of what they do on the water, but because of what they do on land and what they do for other people. I, I agree with it. Like you know, I, when I started it's this, such a black yeah. guy, it's just so hard to take that this actually happened. I mean, that's kind of what I said when I opened it, just talking raw and and not even thinking much, just saying this is a black eye. But it's also, in a in a re- weird way, you could never pay for the publicity or drawing things or making things aware. And there's always bad apples. It doesn't matter what you're doing, you know, football, it, dancing. It doesn't matter. Remember Nancy Kerrigan? I mean. Things happen bad in the whole way. I guess just, you know, the one thing that I feel like obligated to, you know, just discuss again, I'm not accusing you guys or anything, or why didn't you do this or that? Because anybody that does on this is is ridiculous. Show up and help these two guys out if you think you got a better way of doing this. But in the same reason, 
from even when I started it, you know, I've been doing this for 20 some years. This is my full time job and how I've seen things progress with like people and their desire to quote unquote be sponsored and the things that go along with that of, you know, the social media and all of the attention that this brings now. And obviously the money, I don't think this is going away. People are still going to cheat. And that's why, you know, you just like the law, people rob banks. They've been robbing banks for a long time. This is not going to go away. We just hope to keep it to a minimum. You guys can self-police a little bit, right? But I, I guess, you know, privately, and I definitely don't want you guys telling everybody what you're going to do in the, in the, uh, behind the scenes, but to make this a little bit safer deal for people that go in so that they don't get cheated. The one thing I wanted to say earlier when you touched on like different kinds of methods is most importantly, just anglers, just police themselves and don't be afraid to speak up. I, I hear all these stories on, oh, I was, you know, I knew something this time or my buddy sent me this text message a long time ago and so-and-so this and so-and-so that. Man, if you're in this let people know if, if something happens sketchy, let people know. And, you know, you're not going to be a snitch or an, a narc or whatever, but at the, at the bare minimum, we would have never had some worldwide explosion. Like we had, we could have nipped it in the butt long ago, you know, and, and guys do a good job of policing themselves, but they don't do a good job of reporting it. All it turns into is gossip. So flip that around and officially report something you know and 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 if somebody asks you to do something dishonest just just be the better guy and, and you know and don't participate and, and if it's bad enough let somebody know i think that's fair i mean i mean moving forward i know you guys aren't going to set anything out here like we kind of talked about but where do you see these tournament organizations going? I mean, Craig, you were basically, I would say, kind of the godfather of starting these things. With you know, there was other people involved, of course, but you've been you were the first way station, right, for this big deal, and that's gone from how many people did you have the first year? I can't remember when we talked about it in the, in the first podcast we did. It was like five hundred people or something. It's been three multiple hands before. You know, it was, and there were three state way stations at one time, and then it went down to one way station and changed names to the brawl. But um, I do see change, but I honestly don't know what kind of change we're going to see. Um, the one thing that this has done, at least for my group, and I'm sure a lot of it is a consideration from Jason, is uh, it's going to force me to look into what, is out there what kind of technology is out there what we can change to make it better um like i said it's it's still fresh this was friday afternoon it's, it's sunday afternoon now um there's been dozens of phone calls made um hopefully we come up with a solution that you know it's not going to solve everything but it's just going to make it that much better and well, I I guess like where I was kind of going with that is, is when you started this, and we've talked about this kind of independently on each one of your podcasts that we've done on the Big Water podcast prior, Jason, just a week or two ago and Craig last year. But when, when you started this with, let's say, 500 people or whatever it was at that beginning, I don't know that number. It was, but, it was like 173 or something the first okay. year, if you go back so, in history, history. Ballpark. So let's say from 150 people to 15,000, right? Obviously, things are going to change, and obviously, you've made changes in it. I mean, God, we got boats for first prize now. I mean, gosh, what do you got? Two boats, Jason. Is it you got a Ranger like I run or Ranger 622 uh, in first place, and I think a 620 or 621 for second? I mean, that's kind of crazy. Um, do, do you have any ideas or anything you like to share with the people to kind of tease them a little bit, if nothing else, to some of the things you do besides all the charity things and having all these different events? It's not just weigh your fish, one deal. Like, there's a lot of things that can go on. Uh, prior to even the fishing, the tournament. Well, I know, and I know Jason's too. Uh, and just like what he's done in his tournament, um, he's added a division for kayaks, you know, a single boat angler. We have shore divisions. There's things that are being done. We have veterans divisions now, uh, divisions for women, um, kids. Um, as it's gotten bigger, it's, it's allowed us to expand into other areas and reward people. Um, differently than we, we have in the past. And uh, that that's all been a good thing. I guess if you can figure out how to, to 
type down and hype down the ego thing, that would be great. But you'd probably be the first persons on the planet to do that, right? We wouldn't have to be fishing. We could be uh, in the Bahamas or fishing or doing something different, right? I wouldn't be tournament running a tournament. That'd be well. You know, <laughs> the man of the the man. <laughs> Yeah, that's a fact. The man who's always the quiet killer with the big water fishing team here is producer dude. You know, he's like Wilson. You always just see him sneaking above the uh, the thing. And he's been super quiet, which he usually is. But you've got to have some questions for us, producer dude. Like yeah, I mean, I just I, I want to know, you know, or I guess, you know, have you guys just talked to the anglers out there and just, you know, talking about, you know, everybody loves your events and your derbies and everything. And you know, it's kind of the, well, if someone's not going to, you know, it's the mom that goes, well, if they're, you're not going to play right, then we're all going home. I, I just kind of want to, you know, what are your words to the anglers and, and to keep these derbies and the tournaments going and being effective and, you know, all of that? What, I mean, what do you want to say to them? All I got to say is if you're not going to be honest, you can get the F out of here. <laughs> we want We want it to be honest. Craig, Craig wants an honest derby. Um, listen, we the, the sponsors love this. It's great for the communities. It's great for the whole shoreline of Lake Erie. Uh, hotels, gas stations, restaurants, bait shops, car dealerships, boat dealerships, uh, you know, rod and reel companies, tackle shops, you know, guys doing things on social media, making money on social media, anglers getting money from sponsorships and, and donations and things like that to help them fuel their fire. This is a great, great thing for everybody. And we're going to keep it going. This little bump in the road is not going to stop us. Um, and, and I know that I'll try my damnedest to keep it honest. And I know Craig will too. And that's all I got to say. And I think the other thing that, you know, both derbies have done is um, – in some ways when we got kids involved the first couple of years it's made them want to be walleye tournament fishermen it makes them want to be part of the community it makes them want to be the next bait store owner the, the next boat salesman the next rod and reel designer and that's what's going to carry us um that that part of it is really cool to see um and that's just another aspect of, of how we're going to keep this going and why we keep this going. This is, these derbies are probably going to go on a long time after Jason steps down and I'm retired. And it's going to, it's going to, I don't see it ending. If there's Craig, many, you are like the grandpa. You know that, right? Yeah. You are the grandpa. Of there, are, there are just too many goods that something like this. It's, we're going to get a little bad press. Some people are going to say some pretty crappy stuff. You know, everybody's got an idea on how to solve stuff. I mean, they want me to put a fish in a blender, then put it in a Ziploc and send it over to Jay's way station to be weighed. Um, you know, there's just, everybody's got an opinion. And everybody's just got to slow down a little bit. And uh, remember, it, it's just a very small portion of it. The negative is, is very small uh, a portion of what we deal with. At the end of the day, people need to people need to understand that this is it, it is competition. It is it is sport, but this this is for fun and this is for yeah. you know to get people out on the water. Like Craig said, that that don't normally fish, and I've got buddies that that got into the these derbies, you know, and they're all excited about it, and they've never even you know they've never even so much as tied a fishing lure on a line, but they'll get out there with us and try and win a you know a huge prize and. And everybody thinks they can do it, um, except for me. I, I know that I can't. I suck. So I go out there and I just said, ah, I might as well be the tournament director. You know, and the guys that fish on my boat are bum and they're always trying to get on my buddies. But, hey, are you fishing tomorrow? Because um, if you are, can you see if any of your buddies are going and see if I can ride with them? That's kind of the calls I get. I think that the advice I would give to somebody that's thinking about all of these things is don't worry about sponsorships and things like that. As good as what you guys are doing, you know, the Lake Erie Walleye Trail is a club thing. You're not going to quit your job from doing it, right? So have some fun. The guys get too worked up on all of those things and enjoy it because I think the camaraderie is probably one of the best things, you know, all the people that we know how it's brought even just all of us together. 
and um, you know, don't get too serious with this thing and shoot her straight. That's that's pretty simple stuff, right? <laughs> Why don't uh, each of you guys uh, tell me if we want to sign up where we need to go to fish both of your derbies and the Lake Erie Walleye Trail? Give us your info there. So the Lake Erie Walleye Trail is just that, LakeerieWalleyeTrail.com. Um, our season has concluded, but but look for early bird signups to start in January. Uh, we're also going to release our schedule. We were supposed to do that Friday. Uh, didn't didn't quite work out that way. Um, and the Lake Erie Fall Brawl dot com is the same thing. Uh, we have signups going till the 11th of October. Uh, we also have th three signup parties coming this week. Uh, Wednesday at Jan's Netcraft, Thursday at Mid Ohio Sports, and Friday at the Armstrong Huron Drive Through. You can come down five to eight at each one of those locations. We've got, you know, cookout food, hang out, meet and greet. Uh, check us out, and uh, we appreciate you guys fishing this year. It's going to be a good year, and and I hope we can keep breaking records. Is there anything that we need to put out there that you guys would like on the record? I know um, we said a lot. I want to give you one last opportunity. Well, real quick, uh, they can sign up for the Walleye Slam at walleyeslam.com. Uh, Sign-ups are open till October 12th. So hopefully you get signed up and, you know, try to win a cool prize and most importantly, uh, have a lot of fun. And um, that's the other thing by getting involved with these that I think people uh, should know. Like Jason's cookouts are a blast. I mean, everybody that goes, you know, they come back, they talk about the burgers, you know, having a few brewskis with buddies, hanging out. They bought a, a T-shirt at, you know, Hook and Drag. It, it, it's not they, just – They, they not came, home, just, they came home with E. coli or something, right? Yeah, you know, but it's not <laughs> just about the event itself. It is the the side events that go along with it, you know. The, the camaraderie. It's building the camaraderie. The that we have are, are a blast. So, you know, it, and let's face it, look at the history of it. You don't have to be the best angler to win. So this, these events really are for everybody. Yeah, take a second, guys, and listen to this. If you want to hear more about the individual events themselves, we've done a podcast with Craig Lewis last year and Jason Fisher here just a little bit ago, and they get in details as to what they're doing even more. And uh, if you're giving these guys a hard time for how they're running things, you are insane because they are putting a ton of time, sweat, and effort into this. And I thank you as a guy that you know, doesn't necessarily partake in all these things as much as I would like to. Uh, you know, being part of the fishing business and making my living, these are things that are good for us all. So I want to thank you for your time. Jason, you got something else. Yeah. So I just wanted to, I wanted to plug one thing. Um, a local guy, local angler, Ryan Buddy is teaming up with a couple other um, national walleye anglers and they're, they're heading over to uh, Prague, Czech, Czech Republic, the Czech Republic. And they're, they're taking part in the USA Predator team uh, and they're fishing over there. Um, give them the support, guys. It's USA, Team USA. We, we're rooting for them. And uh, Ryan's a good buddy of mine. He's also a local guy. And, uh, you know, we want him to do the best out there for USA. Yeah, Thank I you. saw that. they got some people behind Dakota Lithium Batteries that I work with as a big sponsor of that, helping those guys get over there. So definitely a cool deal. Is there anything else? Because guys, like, we talk so much, right? Like, we just were talkers. I think if we go too much longer, people would just cut us off anyway. Go watch the football game. Yeah, that's, prob that's probably it. Well, thanks again for giving us your time, kind of setting things straight, putting the things on the record, and thank you for all that you do. And thanks for everyone checking into the Big Water podcast for this kind of little special episode, if you will. Producer, dude, we are at BigWaterFishing.com. We are on Instagram and Facebook at Big Water Fishing, and we are on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, Google, where else are we? Amazon. Amazon. Oh, ooh, Amazon. That's the only one I could think of you missed. <laughs> Basically, just go to bigwaterfishing.com. We are on just about any digital platform as Big Water Fishing, rather, it's our podcast, or make sure you check out our videos on social media or even on the YouTube. We're doing those just about every week, aren't we? Just about. And we have some new things coming. We're not going to tell you yet, but it's a tease, some fun new stuff. So, Thanks for tuning into the Big Water Podcast. Thank you very much, Craig Lewis and Jason Fisher, for your time. Until the next episode, we're out.